Uxbridge hints at potential of more asset sales amid underutilization concerns. Daryl Knight, The Standard, Uxbridge. At a recent council meeting, Mayor Dave Barton suggested the township may consider selling some of its underutilized assets in the future. This came during a discussion following a presentation on non-core asset management at the meeting on the morning of Monday, June 17th. Mayor Barton highlighted the Zephyr Library and Community Hall as examples of assets which are way underutilized, proposing that consolidating them could create one great asset. We have to think outside the box, Mayor Barton urged, emphasizing the need to prioritize efficient use of resources over yielding to resident pressure against change. This comment comes in the wake of opposition from Zephyr residents against relocating the library to the community centre, which would reduce the community's hall floor space. Mayor Barton referenced the Council's recent decision to declare the King Street Parkette surplus, the sale of the Lions Hall in Goodwood a few years ago, and the decision against installing curbs and sidewalks on Maple Street. I'm so proud of this Council for making tough decisions, he stated. TLDSB recognizes I.E. Weldon students' carpentry success. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Kawartha Lakes. The Trillium Lakelands District School Board, TLDSB, honored a local high school student for his carpentry success at a meeting on Tuesday, June 11th. At the meeting, I.E. Weldon Secondary School student Caleb Dyke was recognized for winning a gold medal at the National Skills Ontario competitions. He competed in the individual carpentry competition. The Skills Ontario competition offers a unique opportunity for top students to demonstrate they are the best of the best in their field. Over the two and a half days, they turn the heads of their educators, family, friends, and prospective employers, the Skills Ontario website explained. Superintendent Kim Williams called Mr. Dyke the epitome of a professional. Cool under pressure, even under the pressure of a lot of people watching you perform, she said. For those of you who got a look at what he was building, the workmanship was incredible. IE Weldon teacher Jordan Batty said the competition is an incredible opportunity for these students within our board to go down there, show off their skills, and participate in these high-level competitions. Caleb was slick in that competition. Those two days watching it and watching him compete at this level of competition was just so inspiring to see him perform his skilled trade, he said. He's dedicated in class and is a team leader in our shop. Common Sense Conservative Bill Would Recognize a Canadian National Livestock Brand Common Sense Conservative Member of Parliament, Damien Couric, introduced Private Member's Bill C-407 on Friday, June 21st, an act to recognize a national livestock brand as a symbol of Canada's Western and Frontier heritage. Bill C-407 establishes a national livestock brand to be included in Canada's inventory of national symbols, which include the maple tree, hockey, and lacrosse, and the Canadian tartan, among others. It is time Parliament recognized Western and frontier heritage, especially the work pioneers, farmers, ranchers, and Indigenous people have done in building our economy and our communities, said MP Couric. Bill C-407 aims to acknowledge and promote the role Western and frontier heritage played in building Canada, not only in the West, but in the role agriculture, animal husbandry, and pioneers played in the stitching together of our nation. It would be fitting to have a livestock brand as Canada's national symbol. More than just a way to identify livestock, a brand holds cultural and heraldic significance, said MP Couric. This symbolism is also important for Indigenous peoples, especially on the prairies. This bill would give credit to so many past and present who have spent their lives building Canada. Integrity and affordable housing mix in conversation on local development proposal. Dan Kearns, The Standard. Scugog. Issues of integrity and affordable housing both came up at a Scugog Council meeting on Monday, June 24th, during a discussion on a proposed development in the municipality. At the meeting, councillors heard a request for a minister's zoning order, MZO, from Avenue Properties to set certain parameters for proposed development near Castle Harbour Drive. Through the Provincial Ministry of Municipal Affairs and Housing, an MZO can be issued to override certain planning procedures in order to move a development closer. The meeting also saw seven residents provide delegations to Scugog Council against the MZO request. 
At one point during the discussion, Mayor Wilma Watton felt it was important to explain and defend the council's decision-making. I know many people have said many things about this council and myself, and a lot of it is not pleasant. A lot of it is falsehoods, she said. We do have the best intentions for the best of the community, and I don't think any of us would want to jeopardize our lake or our environmental wetlands. But we do have medical associates who are saying we can't bring doctors because we have nowhere for them to live. With comments being shouted from the viewing gallery, Mayor Watton was forced to take a 10-minute recess in order to regain decorum of the meeting. Specifically, she took issue with a comment the medical associate's comment was made up. I take offense that you think I would make that up, Mayor Watton said to the resident. I find it offensive you would question our integrity. She then stressed the municipality has to look beyond what we have today, and we have to be looking forward. Mayor Watton also stated she wants residents to appreciate and understand all the work, the time, and the consideration which goes into these meetings. Ward 2 Councillor Jana Guido said she fears when her children finish their post-secondary education, they won't be able to come back and call Scugog home. Right now, they can't afford a 5,000-square-foot home, or a 2,000-square-foot home at that matter, she said. We need a way to house that generation, as well as the generation of those who are no longer able to look after their own home, but are not ready to go anywhere else yet. Ward 3 Councillor Robert Rock stated there is no affordable housing and nearly no affordable rental units in Scugog. The MZO request was later referred to municipal development staff for a report in September. Dear Me, A Letter to a Younger Self, Part 2 of 2. This is continued from last week's editorial, talking to the same issue, but with a more hands-on approach. As a young adult, you are facing life and the newfound changes in your path. Here's something good to look at. If you haven't discovered this yet, people approach things with different priorities. And what seems most important is influenced by this. So, you need to know if you are a theory person, a hands-on person, or just a show-me person, or just a let-me-figure-it-all-out-so-I-can-finish-the-day's-work person. These approaches come from the way we think, and so learn. There are basically four patterns. The auditory learner is a person who learns by listening to lectures or sounds. A tactile learner by what they can touch. They kind of get a forced feedback of information and understanding as they handle tools and stuff. There's the visual learner. Telling them doesn't click. But if they can watch a demonstration, this is where they gain their greatest understanding. Lastly, the global learner is the one who learns in the overall flow experience. They can eventually see new and improved ways to do things. They need the overview to plug the pieces into in order to hold on to what they have been taught. In a large way, all of us start out in one of these four categories. Over time, our thinking is influenced by the information we are given, the emotional experiences we have, and the patterns of thinking those closest to us share with us. So, as we grow, these types of thinking overlap, and we all gather a bit of each kind to help us function more practically. In the mix we choose, we are actually discovering our intellectual home, the kind of place we will live within internally. If you want to be true to yourself, this is extremely important to recognize for anyone's future. We call this being responsible. Responsibility is not a nasty word. All it means is the ability to respond again and again in a clear, functioning way. Hence, re, again, spons, the response part, and ability, in Latin, the same as ability. Responsibility. In one degree or another, we've all got this. So, if you so choose the mission, this is mission possible. It just takes practice to put it in place. If, up to this point, all one has been living for is the weekend, then there is very little to gain out of what's being shared here, because this is not talking about the kicks. That's not it. That's the little kid acting in irresponsibility, trying to mess up your new adult life thinking. you got to tell it where to get off. Notice the ear at the beginning of irresponsibility, which means not or against. It's a weakness trying to inject itself into the way you live and think. Shakespeare said, To thine own self be true, and then it shall follow, as does the night the day, that thou canst be false to any man. What was he trying to get at? He was saying, if you're honest about your choices, consider how they will affect others making their choices. Then you will be taking care of your home, your inner person, and your integrity automatically. 
So how do you begin to discover what kind of pattern you think in most strongly? Well, a big clue is to start to take stock of your pattern. Start to listen to how you speak and what most interests you. For instance, when something is being shared, you respond by saying, Oh, I see what you're saying. This can be a strong indicator you are a visual person. If you say more often, I hear you, or that sounds right to me, you may be an auditory learner. Once you grasp or get what is there, did you hear it? Grasp or get? That's the tactile language. You can begin to approach your learning using these approaches. This means the auditory learner can record their notes and play them back to help them learn better. The visual person can watch videos or draw it out to see it better. The tactile learner can take things apart and put things together to get how things work. The global learner can learn to step back to get a bigger picture so they can make better sense of the pieces as they come, understanding how they fit together better, like puzzle building. To paraphrase, the Bible says, as someone thinks a certain way in their heart, they will live out of that. That's in Proverbs 23, 7, regarding selfish behavior. But it works for recognizing and establishing good patterns as well. This can really help you to discover the kind of work and kind of schooling to choose. Finding your ability to respond and your pattern of learning goes a long way to help you navigate in your own life. If you want the perks of being grown up, then you have to find the attitude which works best. Don't worry. In the seasons of good choices, there are many great times built into your way. We don't need to go out of our way to drag stuff in. That just messes up the home. So we're talking about what you might call your soul choices, the integrity of your inner life. The word integrity is thrown around a lot today, as if it means being able to back up one's choices or justify them as a choice on purpose. However, it actually means to have integration, a consistency or cohesiveness in one's behavior and one's self or inner person. Stress and anxiety arise when one avoids recognizing this. Even friendships in life should be those who will help you grow healthy. This can reveal yourself to you in the interaction, based on how real you are around them. It's always better than hanging with those who are just around. There's an old saying, idle hands are the devil's workshop. This means if you don't choose in life, then you will become a victim through the neglect of your life. I want to play and avoid choices just leads to compulsive behavior and the misuse or abuse of what your life is created for. Proverbs 18.24 says, A man with many friends can still be ruined, but a true friend sticks closer than a brother. Difficulties occur when one hasn't come to know and use their own learning language to make better choices in friendships, schooling, and job avenues. You know, as one sits around in downtime and just daydreams about better days. So find faithful friends and talk with them. Bounce ideas and choices off them. Jesus is there to be a friend like this for you as well, if you'll let him in your inner life. Just saying. Choices are good things. It's how we are all hardwired. So knowing your makeup can take a lot of the stress away, no longer mistaking our pattern of thinking. So choose away, you adult you, and make them according to your bent. Then own them, follow through, and watch your home open up. God bless. Welcome to You've Got to Be Kidding, a podcast that offers a different perspective of life around us. Listen now to author Jonathan Van Bilsen. Like so many of you, I subscribe to a number of streaming services, which no doubt have great programming. I am, however, somewhat disenchanted with the direction these services are heading. When Netflix first came out at about $7 a month, I thought how wonderful it was. There were unlimited films, excellent documentaries, and tons of wonderful television programs, most of which were dropped an entire season at once. I was able to watch as many episodes as I wanted, when I wanted. However, as Bob Dylan once said, the times they are changing. Prime, Crave, and Netflix have recently added an option for commercials, offering the service at a discounted monthly rate. Now honestly, the ads are not bad. They're short and a refreshing difference in quality from mainstream television, so I'm okay with them. They also bring the price of the service back to where it was a few years ago. They are, however, another way of influencing buying choices, something mainstream television has mastered exceptionally well. What I take exception to is that due to regulations in advertising and policies, not all programs are available with the lower price bracket service. House of Dragon, for example, is only available with the Crave Premium package at $22 a month. 
Now that there's advertising, the goal is to keep viewers as long as possible, and many series instead of dropping the entire season air one episode a week. This will keep you coming back to their station. There also seem to be more mid-season breaks for several weeks. Apparently the reason is to prevent viewers from signing up for a free trial and then cancel once they've watched the series. Four or five streaming services per household are the norm. This adds up to about $700 a year. Add to that $1,200 for watching regular television and our entertainment costs are climbing dramatically. Those prices of course do not include internet or mobile phones. I reminisce about my father when Rogers knocked on our door all those many years ago to install a thing called cable. The cost was $6 a month and my all-knowing father said it was a fad and would never last. No one would ever pay to watch television. Enough said. I'm Jonathan Van Bilsen and this is You've Got to Be Kidding. You've Got to Be Kidding was presented by X4 Media with permission from the Standard Media Group. We endeavor to make all information contained in this program as accurate as possible at production time. X4 Media and the Standard Media Group are not responsible for any liabilities resulting from information contained in this program. For more information, please visit x4media.ca. The Standard Podcast was produced by Greenstream Studio for The Standard Newspaper. 